dome. My business card says you're a lot. I do two things, I rock the fuck. Of course, I read the book. What up, y'all? It's your boy Raymond back up in here with another album review video. And today, we've got something special. We have got the early drop of Run the Jewels 4. Now, this album has been building up for a little while now, alright? Ever since I went through all of RTJ's discography last year, I've been like, oh man, you know, it's been a while. It's been like a... It's been like around three or four years ever since uh, RTJ3 came out, you know? When when's the new album going to come out? Then we got word back in like back in like February that they were in the studio and then they were they were planning on releasing something towards around spring or summer. And so I was like, "All right, sweet. I'm hyped. I'm hyped as fuck." But then obviously back in February everything was was chilling, you know, pre-corona pre this uh this you know and whatnot um so the world was a more uh, was a, a little bit more peaceful at that time and then you know then all this started happening and then they decided to drop rtj4 in sort of like the midst or sort of in the middle of all of this chaos that's going on right now it's sort of in the back of my mind i was like okay well you know killer mike and lp they've always been very vocal about their political standings and their political p opinions on sort of like the social conflict between like black and white people and like uh, obviously police brutality against uh, African Americans as well. Killer Mike has always has always uh, weaved that into a lot of his verses in the past, especially on uh, on RTJ3. I feel like RTJ3 uh, was really was really big on uh, a lot of police brutality and police uh, mistreatment of African Americans. I feel like that was a lot of uh, RTJ3. And LP's always really been supportive. I thought that in the back of my mind, you know, with everything going on, it'd be really interesting to see if they had, um, to hear their political take on everything that was going on, because obviously, you know, they would be very vocal about it. They completely delivered on that fact. The RTJ4, RTJ4 from, from beginning to end is just one huge, political rant not even i don't even know if it would really be a rant because there are there are some parts where where mike is kind of going off um just about like the current situation and stuff like that and even has like a verse on walking in the snow that literally quotes george floyd and i'm not sure when they recorded that song but um if it was if it was before all of this that had gone on my god mike like I think there's a lot of there's a lot of really important uh, really important hot takes and political takes on RTJ4. Um, walking in the snow, Mike and LP are really just bouncing off ideas back and forth, um, talking about you know how fucked up it was the thing that happened to George Floyd, and along with the, a bunch of other black victims around the U.S. And so I think that was really important, and even you know obviously quoting George Floyd in the in the verse. I think that'll probably be the the verse of the of the decade, um, with how things are going right now. You start off with Yankee and the Brave, and I think that's a really interesting uh, way to put Killer Mike and LP as a duo. Like LP is the Yankee, and then the Brave is Killer Mike because they are they are a black and white duo, and so I think it's the the dynamic that they're able to share back and forth, and as well as the the different viewpoints that they are able to bounce around back and forth, I think is really interesting. I think what is what makes them such a powerful uh, staple in the hip hop industry. And so um, what we get off of RTJ4 is, is just this collection of different viewpoints on how um, all of the political situations have been going um, in the beginning, like, you know, uh, Yankee and the Brave and Ooh La La, you know, those, those two are very, very powerful, hard-hitting openers with production in the background throughout, like, the whole album, really, that is just super loud, booming, heavy drums. And these bass, these bass and sub-bass lines that are just absolutely insane and super hard-hitting. Definitely digging more to, uh, definitely digging more to the roots of their, uh, of their hip-hop pass 
without a doubt. And so those two tracks would be immediately at the openers, from what I can understand, is them sort of talking, making fun, and sort of talking about the whole uh, bourgeoisie kind of thing and whatnot. At least that's what I can get from their verses. And so that's, I feel like that's a really interesting start to the album where, you know, this kind of all started and whatnot was with money and power. But yeah, we sort of go from Yankee and the Brave and Ooh La La into sort of Out of Sight featuring 2 Chains. 2 Chains is, is back, is he's, he's back on some features. He's been in some features recently. A little bit of a return to form from 2, from two Chains. I thought it was really cool to see him hop on like the track talking about similar things that uh, Mike and LP were talking about in terms of like the whole economic disparity between uh, African Americans as, as the most of the uh, album is talking about. Then we get to my favorite track of the album, which is Just, featuring Pharrell Williams and Zach De La Roca. Pharrell does a fantastic job on this hook. Oh my god, so catchy. The bass in the background is swerving so well. Pharrell does a fantastic job with his flow on the on the hook. And then Mike comes in with this very, very interesting flow. De de definitely something that he that is new that he was trying. I didn't really like it at first, but after about two or three more listens afterwards, I thought I thought it sounded really cool. Plus, Mike comes in with another verse towards the end that he switches up the flow again, anyways. So him and LP have like a good combo on this. I feel like. So yeah, I would have I would have liked for Pharrell to sort of you know deliver a verse on the song but i mean i'm not i'm not too mad at it i think he gives a i think he gives a strong uh chorus and a hook um and i think the the hook really says a lot uh about the song and also just about the album in general saying like oh you know look at all these slave masters posting or posing on your dollar like i think that's really a really interesting and hard bar. Uh, basically, what he's, what Mike is trying to talk about is that, oh, look at all the, all, look at all these, all these black people getting money and whatnot, but yet the money is still technically run by the people who tried to suppress black people. You know, if if, the, if um, that's sort of what I am interpreting it as, like you know, all the, all, all these black people are getting money. And yet, you know, there's still there's still like white people in charge, basically. That's what that's what is trying. Um, I feel like that's what Mike is trying to say. Pharrell and Zach were able to deliver such such a great chemistry on the hook, and also on the chorus, that um, it really makes for something that is very catchy and very exciting. And the hook is just something that is so so in your face, so in your face, and so so rememberable that I feel like it'll stick in the minds of a lot of people, which is exactly what they wanted it to do. I think another important track is definitely a few words for the firing squad. That is, um, that I feel like is sort of their, their declaration to the world of how they want to change uh, how things are going right now, uh, about how they want um, the police to be reformed and whatnot, and it's also just kind of like a big f u to you know everything that's going on, like the rate, the racism, um, the discrimination, you know, everything like that. I feel like that's what that track really represents, um, and it's a good way to wrap up the entire album. I don't know who's playing saxophone in the back. Huh. I hope it's Kamasi Washington. I'm gonna have to look at the credits. But I really hope it's Kamasi Washington. That definitely seems like something that that he would do. But yeah, I don't know. I think I think the last track definitely is able to tie a nice bow around the entire project. Um, for them to release this at this time, I think was absolutely brilliant, and I don't think that it should go unheard at all. I think um, if you really do care about uh, black activism and the culture. I really think this album is important to listen to in a time like this. Um, I don't necessarily agree with everything that LP and Killer Mike are saying on the entire project, but um, the general gist of it about um, uh, black equality, I think is something that uh, I, can definitely, I can definitely agree with 100%. And so um, definitely, highly suggest you go listen to this album 
And um, yeah, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoyed the heck out of it. It's a very intense, very powerful. It's also a banger. Like the whole thing is just is just one long banger. You know, one long one long rant. You know, that's kind of that's kind of what this whole thing uh, this whole thing feels like. Which is a very it's a it's sort of like a different vibe from the rest of their uh, from RTJ one through three because they, uh, RTJ one through three have are used pretty much um, very structured very uh they're structured like a hip-hop album they're also a lot longer rtj4 coming in only at with 11 songs at 39 minutes pretty short pretty short for uh for a duo for a rap duo and so um this thing is just completely like you know get in make your statement and then get out you know and let the rest let the rest sink in you know that's that's definitely the vibe that i also get from this as well and so with that um, I think for RTJ4, I am going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. Reason why it's not a 10, I just think that a few of the tracks, uh, the production standpoint, uh, is just a little bit uninteresting at some points. Um, Goonies versus E.T., uh, it comes in, the, the beat comes in so hard, and I'm so excited for the track. And then, you know, we get a couple verses from, from Mike, an LP and then all of a sudden there's just like this really this really long extended breakdown towards the middle and then the track kind of loses steam and then it just randomly picks up towards like the the last you know like minute of the track and it's like it just kind of doesn't it doesn't feel like it's all that thought out you know like I, I, I totally understand the verses and whatnot um, and it has like a great beginning but just towards the middle during like the beat breakdown it just doesn't really make any sense why they would just sort of stop their verses, you know, like halfway through. Also on, on I feel like the last track, I, while I do think it delivers such a powerful statement, I don't think it needs to necessarily be six minutes long. I think it could have definitely have been shorter. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, wasn't like a huge fan of the structure of it. I love, I love the, the very intense, very cinematic buildups of the drums throughout throughout the background of both LP and Mike's verses. I love that. I think it's very, very intense. It's probably one of the most in-your-face tracks on the entire project. Um, but I just feel like the, the last half, um, I feel like it just kind of dies down after Mike and LP deliver their initial f verses at the very very first half so those are really my my only main problems with it that's only for like a few of the tracks but the rest i think are fantastic i think uh just and yankee and the brave i think those are 10 out of 10 tracks um just alone as they are i think both of them say uh say a lot i love the beat on yankee and the brave i think that goes absolutely hard as hell and it's just it's just super entertaining this thing is just like an action-packed movie um, mixed with like political and economic and social statements going left and right and um, it's really it's also like a deep dive into sort of the political aspects of a black and white duo like they are and so definitely go ahead and check out this project um, highly recommend it uh, this could definitely be a contender for album of the year I don't necessarily think the Grammys would think so, but for me personally, I think this is definitely a big contender for Album of the Year. That's pretty much all I really had to say about it. Go check it out. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the album and if you disagree or agree with my opinions on it. Make sure to like and subscribe. Got more videos coming up. Still got the Poppy rea reaction that I got to do. And uh, I think there's a couple other tracks I think that I had to do as well. I still got to do the Freddie Gibbs album. And then we got New Music Friday tomorrow which means we might even have more projects coming out so a lot of stuff going on be sure to like and subscribe so that you can keep up and uh yeah i don't know that's pretty much it i'll uh i'll see you guys in the next video <laughs>